Hey, how's it going guys? Today I want to talk about how to lay out your house on your property from your property corners by only using a string line, a hundred foot tape measure, and the help of a Greek philosopher that was born 2700 years ago. I'll discuss how laying out your house on your lot is similar to the early surveyors that surveyed the West. And I also pay tribute to a surveyor who became a war hero during World War II. So let's get this thing going. I've got a small design build house being constructed on the north shore of the Sam Rayburn Reservoir in East Texas near the town of Brados. Now this particular client wanted to build a new house on his existing property. I did a preliminary site plan showing his house and garage. The traditional layout is to be perpendicular to the front of your property line as you see here. And his main desire for the layout of his house on his property was to be able to sit on his back porch and look out upon the north shore of Sam Rayburn Lake. He also wanted to see the lake from his office, which is on the same side of his porch. So we decided to look at two different angles that the house could sit on the property and give him viewable access to the lake. We laid out his house first parallel to the south property line. This is where we used the help of a Greek philosopher born in 560 BC by the name of Pythagoras. You see, he was a philosopher, but he was also a mathematician, and from your high school geometry class, you know that he developed the Pythagorean theorem. On buying a piece of property or a lot, the first thing that you want to do is check to see if the property corners are installed. They should be iron pegs in the ground at your corners. If you don't see these property corners, then you will have to have a survey crew install the iron rods. Your survey crew will need your deed or of your house, or you may have a plot plan. This information will provide the surveyors the necessary plot information to install the property corners. In this example, his property corners are already installed. So from the property corners, you run a string line down the property line. And from our example, we ran a string line along the southeast property line. We measured 20 feet off of the southwest property corner, and then we turned perpendicular and measured 40 feet from this string line to the location of his southwest corner of his house, which is laid out on his property. 40 foot was the distance that he requested to be from his southwest property line. And we drove a stake in the ground at this location. But now we had to check this stake location. This is where Pythagoras comes in. In his theorem, to parallel a line as we measured the 40 foot to this location, we also measured 30 foot down the string line on the property line. Then at that point on the string line, we measured the diagonal distance, and according to Pythagoras, the distance must be equal to the square root of the square of the two sides added together which in this case would be the square root of 2,500, 40 squared plus 30 squared. This 40 square added to 30 square makes it a little easier. The square of 30 is 900, the square of 40 is 1,600, added equals 2,500, and the square root of 2,500 is 50. Now, you adjust this stake in the ground until the diagonal distance of 50 and the 40 foot perpendicular distance come together. Now you know that the 40 foot distance is perpendicular to the south property line. Once we did that, we measured along the length of the house another 30 foot length. And to keep it parallel to the south property line, we used the same formula and established a meridian line for the south edge of his house. Once that south edge of his house was established, this client viewed the lake from his porch location and his office location. This layout of his house was not to his liking as he could not see the lake from his office. So we then laid out his house perpendicular to the south property line. We used the same method of the Pythagoras theorem and identified the southwest and southeast corners of his house. From this layout, he was able to see the lake from his porch and from his office, therefore he accepted this layout. As I stated in the intro, this method of laying out your corners of your house is similar to how the early surveyors surveyed the west. 
when the United States and then President Thomas Jefferson bought the Louisiana Territory from France, surveyors were sent to stake out the West all the way to the Pacific Coast. They only used primitive methods, a compass and a surveyor's chain, similar to our method in only using a string line and a tape measure. There is an obelisk monument in the town of East Liverpool, Ohio that starts the surveying for the West. It was the beginning point of the U.S. land public survey for the western United States all the way to the Pacific Ocean. It is known as the point of beginning for the surveys of the western land. They established a meridian line that ran directly north and south and a baseline that ran directly east and west at this point. Directly north is to the North Pole, so they had to factor in the curvature of the Earth. Every town, township, city, county, and state was laid out according to this meridian and baseline. Every town and city in the West has Main Street running directly east and west. Every township, county, and state line runs north and south, east and west. The only place it doesn't is because of a geological formation, either mountains or rivers. So you can lay out your house in this simple manner, using a string line to establish your property line from your property corners, then use a 100 foot tape measure with the Pythagoras theorem. I wanna give tribute to a surveyor born and raised in Broadus that became an American war hero. His name is Lance Cleo Wildcat Wade. He was born in Broadus in the year 1915 and in 1935 at the age of 20, he bought an airplane and learned how to fly. In 1940, there was a war in Europe. Hitler and Germany had invaded and conquered France. Their next objective was to cross the English Channel and invade England. At that time, 80% of the American people, along with President Roosevelt, were against the United States from helping England and getting into a European war. England needed help and they came to Broadus, Texas and asked Lance Cleo if he would help. He said yes. He enlisted in Great Britain's Royal Air Force and in 1942 saw action in North Africa. At that time, the skies of North Africa were controlled by the German Luftwaffe Air Force and their Messerschmitt airplanes. That was until Lance Cleo showed up. In his first week of combat duty, he had four kills and immediately achieved ace status. It was told that he had an aggressiveness with combat air tactics against enemy aircraft that he soon to earn the nickname Wildcat. By the end of 1942, he had 15 kills in that region. He had such an incredible record against the Germans and the Italian air forces that when these two adversaries saw him in the sky, they would hightail it out of that area. He became England's greatest foreign born pilot ace ever with the most kills. The King and Queen of England wanted to meet him, so he visited them in London, and he said at the time, Before the Royal Air Force, my life consisted of surveying land from the backside of a mule. Now I have tea with the King and Queen of England and their family. President Roosevelt wanted to meet him, so he sailed for the United States and met Roosevelt at the White House. Roosevelt asked him if he would accept a position with the American Air Force and train the American fighter pilots. He declined, saying he wanted to stay with a group that he first started with, the Royal Air Force. By the time the Germans were chased out of North Africa, Lance Cleo continued with his kills and netted over 20. They made him wing commander and squadron leader of the 145th Squadron at the age of 27. They moved on to Italy and he registered five more kills for a total of 25. He tragically died over Italy on a training mission in January of 1944. His body was brought back and is buried in the East Texas town of Cushing, Texas, which is just down the road from Broadus. He was described as a distinguished American fighter ace who epitomized perhaps more than any other American airman the wartime accords between Britain and the United States. A true hero for both the United States and Great Britain. Folks, if you like this content, please like and comment. I'll be putting out more content on the building of this house and other related items. So subscribe and I'll notify you on the upcoming videos. Thank you.